Good evening and welcome to the 15th annual Houston Methodist Hospital resident and fellow graduation. I am Dr. Tim Boone and I have the privilege of serving as the designated institutional officer for the Houston Methodist sponsored residency and fellowship programs. Although this evening's event is not what any of us expected just a few short months ago, we have worked diligently to ensure that this momentous occasion did not go by without proper recognition of your achievements and success, as well as those of your faculty. It was our sincere hope that we would all be in the Crane Garden this evening, as we have been since the first graduation ceremony in 2006. Tonight, we celebrate the 45 training programs and 126 graduating residents and fellows, along with your families, friends, and Houston Methodist faculty and staff. Nonetheless, we have put together the graduation program as if we were together, in hopes that you will be able to share it with those who have helped you get to this point in your career. Thank you for your flexibility and understanding during this challenging time. I'd also like to take a moment to thank those who have helped support our residents and fellows along this journey. Dedicated faculty, supportive program directors and coordinators, ancillary and support staff throughout the entire hospital, hospital leadership, and the staff of the GME office who listen attentively to residents and tend to the needs of the programs. It has been an honor watching you grow into skilled physicians and leaders through your perseverance and determination. We know that you will flourish in these years to come and hopefully enjoy much success in your personal and professional lives. In a few moments, you will hear from our president and CEO, Dr. Mark Boom and Dr. Roberta Schwartz, Executive Vice President and Chief Innovation Officer of Houston Methodist Hospital. Both will share their congratulations as well as a professional charge as you enter a very different world of medicine than you entered when you began your journey. But first, it is my pleasure to introduce Senior Staff Chaplain Hilary Chala from the Department of Spiritual Care and Values Integration at Houston Methodist. She will begin our ceremony with the invocation Hillary will be immediately followed by Drs. Boom and Schwartz. Greetings, everyone. My name is Hillary Chala. I'm the senior staff chaplain for Houston Methodist, representing our GME. We are so excited for everyone who is participating in their graduation today. We are deeply honored by all the support of all their heroes, parents, and loved ones who helped make this day possible. I'll be offering today's invocation, and we'll be starting with a scripture from Ephesians. Let us pray to the Lord. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth. You are everywhere present and you fill all things. You are the treasury of blessings and you, Lord, are the giver of life. Come and abide in us, cleanse us, and heal our souls, O gracious Lord. Dear God, we pray for you to please guide, guard, protect our graduates here before us. We thank you, Lord, for every rich blessing you have given us. 
We thank you for the many ways that you allowed our medical residents to witness your mercy here at the Methodist Hospital during their medical residencies. We pray, Lord, that you continue to be with them and all their loved ones as they pursue new avenues of contributing to the holy vocation of medicine. Fill them up with your wisdom and grace. We pray, Lord, that as they step from here, that you grant them and all their loved ones holy guardian angels to be by their sides every day of their lives, sheltering and protecting them under their mighty wings. Through Jesus Christ, our living, resurrected King and Lord. Amen. Hi, I'm Mark Boom, the President and Chief Executive Officer of Houston Methodist, and uh, it's my pleasure uh, to welcome you to uh, our 2020 Fellow and Resident graduation ceremony, obviously being done virtually this year. I'm Roberta Schwartz, the Executive Vice President and Chief Innovation Officer at Houston Methodist Hospital, and I would like to add my welcome to all of you, your family, as well as your program directors and faculty to your 2020 graduation. The 2020 graduation is certainly unique. Um, probably what will hopefully be the one and only COVID graduation that we will ever do. Obviously our first time graduating everybody online, but that makes it no less special. Each one of you have accomplished such a great deal in the time you've been at Houston Methodist. And I'm sure that you will no doubt forever remember the eye care values. You will also forever remember that you are graduating in a very unique moment, a moment that is very different for all of our physicians and everybody around you that is different than any other time in our history. You have been incredible soldiers through what we have faced and you go out into the world at this very unique time of everything from your mask to every other new PPE that you will acquire along the way. Your time at Houston Methodist has been very special and we are very honored that you have uh, spent all of these years with us. And I do want to add a huge thanks to all of your program directors. And normally, quite honestly, this would be the time that we would turn around and give thanks to each of your families for every one of the sacrifices that they have made to allow you the time to do your training at Houston Methodist. I want to add my, my thank you to each of you uh, uh, and profound gratitude for all that you've done in the time you've been here as residents and fellows um, and for what you've done during this very unprecedented time. You know, I was sitting in your shoes, uh, I guess it was 25 years ago uh, this June, uh, and never in my wildest dreams or my worst nightmares did I, did I ever envision going through something like we've been going through with COVID. But you know, as I talk to so many of my colleagues and, and the people who have worked to train you during this time, you know, the, the most common theme I heard from all of them was, you know, this is exactly what we trained for. This is what we were called to do. And to me, medicine is a calling. Um, it's a beautiful calling and it's a tremendous privilege that people let us into their lives each and every day. Um, nowhere have they needed physicians and nurses and hospitals more than they've needed them during this crisis. And in fact, when we look out at data, the most respected voices in the country right now in terms of uh, where to get information about COVID are physicians, are nurses. And you all serve a profound role in making that happen in the community. So you've had the distinct, uh, uh, I think, privilege, but also um, sort of strange time of being uh, our COVID graduating class. As Roberta said, I hope we don't have to do another like this, um, but I have no doubt that this will serve you well during your careers. Our eye care values at Houston Methodist are always our guiding uh, principles and nowhere have I seen that more in action than throughout this crisis, throughout this crisis um, uh, exhibited by all of you who s sat there and said, okay, we've got a challenge facing us. The community needs us. People need us. What do we do? How do we help? How do we step in? How do we take care of that community? And that's our job. That's our job as physicians. It's a sacred duty. It's a sacred obligation. And it's, it's a sacred privilege for all of us. 
And I just want to express my humble gratitude to each of you for really exhibiting and exemplifying those I care values. They will serve you well throughout your future. Keep them, cherish them, use them in your lives. Always use them as that bellwether to ask yourself, am I doing the right thing? Um, because if you keep those as your guidepost, you always will. And I want to thank you each for selecting Houston Methodist. You had many choices of where to do a residency or a fellowship. Some of you will step out into the world and, and your first jobs very soon. Some of you are moving on to other training programs, either internally or externally. Um, and I wish each of you the best of success throughout your future. God bless each of you. Congratulations. It's my honor to introduce our keynote speaker for this evening's event, Dr. Joseph Fins. Dr. Fins is the E. William Davis, Jr. MD Professor of Medical Ethics and Chief of the Division of Medical Ethics at Weill Cornell Medical College, where he also serves as Professor of Medicine with tenure, Professor of Public Health, and Professor of Medicine in Psychiatry. Dr. Fins is an elected member of the Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Sciences and was elected a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 2012. Dr. Fins graduated from Wesleyan University and Cornell University Medical College. He completed his residency in internal medicine and fellowship in general internal medicine at the New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center. Dr. Fins is the author of over 250 publications. His current scholarly interests include ethical and policy issues in brain injury and disorders of consciousness, palliative care, research ethics in neurology and psychiatry, medical education, and methods of ethics case consultation. Dr. Fins is a past president of the American Society of Bioethics, Humanities, and is a member of the Hastings Center Board of Directors. He has been a very good friend to Houston Methodist, and I know that you will find his address quite meaningful. Dr. Fins. Thank you, Dr. Boone, for that kind invitation. I bring greetings from Wild Cornell Medicine and New York Presbyterian Hospital. I'm honored to be here to congratulate all the Houston Methodist residents on their accomplishments. I know that none of you expected this to be how you would graduate. And you didn't expect that all those years of residency, when you learned how to treat all sorts of conditions, would be dominated these past months by a single disease. Before January, none of us had ever heard of COVID-19. And here we are, dominated by its presence, the staggering number of deaths, the economic toll on the nation, and its scientific mysteries. You may be disappointed that you are not having a proper graduation, and having to listen to a virtual graduation speaker. But actually, I want you all to feel a sense of privilege. Privilege, you ask? How could that be? Well, let me explain. It is rare in the history of medicine that you get to watch a brand new disease unfold before your very eyes. We have read about diseases that are now understood, but this is still a work in progress. Every day we learn something new as we practice old school translational medicine and bedside observations. Just think about it. At the beginning of the pandemic, did we know it would cause an epidemic of renal insufficiency and renal failure? In New York, we came within days of running out of dialysis. We were rationing time on dialysis because we did not have enough machines and dialysis nurses to treat everyone. Did we know that COVID-19, a respiratory disease, would also affect the kidneys or that there would be a Kawasaki-like illness in kids? Did we know any of that? No. So think of us as privileged. If this tragedy were going to happen, and of course, none of us wish it had with such ferocity, we are fortunate that it happened now on our watch. We are getting a firsthand look at medical history. It will probably be the medical story of this young century, and it will be formative for your careers and how medicine is practiced going forward. And all of you were there at the beginning, a privilege amidst the tragedy. 
You're also uniquely privileged because you are positioned to understand what is happening unlike anyone else. You are fresh out of training, superbly prepared, and completely up to date. Your knowledge of the art is current, and you are positioned to make observations at the bedside and in the laboratory that others will miss. The Spanish philosopher, Jose Ortega y Gasset, famously said that the uneducated eye does not see. Your eyes have been educated, and they are starting to understand this dreaded disease because of what your patients, your professors, and attendings have taught you. And of course, what you've learned from each other as residents. Because of your experience at Houston Methodist, you are positioned to learn and grow and contribute to the well-being of humanity. What a gift you have received. What a privilege. But at this moment in your life, you need to remember that it didn't start here. You made it to the pinnacle of medical science here in Houston because of all that had happened before. Think of all the people who invested their love and concern into your life and careers. So if you're with family now, watching this, thank them. Tell your mom and dad, your grandparents, aunts and uncles, brothers and sisters, and your significant others how grateful you are for the sacrifices they made so you could pursue your dream. The pep talk they gave you after that organic chemistry test for the confidence they had in you when you doubted yourself the extra jobs they took to help you go to school. Thank them. Now, close your eyes and think about the very first time you imagined that you could actually become a doctor. And think about why you had that realization. Was it a science teacher in high school or a professor in college? Was it the illness of a loved one that spurred your curiosity and ambition? Or was it a physician who let you shadow them around in your first white coat? You know, the one that was so big that you had to roll up the sleeves to make it fit. Well, you grew into it, didn't you? Each of these folks were so pivotal to your growth, so central to your life's trajectory and to your arrival at this precise moment. Be sure to reach out to them and thank them. And if they are gone, take a quiet moment to remember them. I had a great mentor in high school who I think about now. I would love to call him and ask him what he thought about the pandemic and more generally about my work and my career. It would sort of be like a 100,000 mile checkup, but he's gone now. I remember learning of his death when I was on call as an intern. His name was Dr. John L. Battenfeld, or Dr. B as he was lovingly called. He was an ER doc at the local hospital. He'd been a GP in our town for decades served as a battalion sur surgeon with Patton in World War II and was a superb physician. After having a couple of heart attacks, he left the stress of his practice for the quiet of the local emergency room. And that's where our paths crossed. Under Dr. B's tutelage, I learned about Cat Gut and the Italian poet Dante Alighieri in the same sitting. He was a broadly trained humanist, educated at Georgetown by the Jesuits. There was nothing he did not know. For Dr. B, medicine wasn't just about the science, it was about humanity. Medicine was an applied humanities discipline in the service of those to whom our care was entrusted. His influence led me to medicine and ultimately to medical ethics. I wish I could thank him now, just as you thank your mentors. But today is more than about giving thanks. It's about assuming new obligations and responsibilities. As you graduate from the residency program, the larger message is that it is now time, it's your turn to become a mentor. It's time to take up that charge. This is the life cycle of medical education. It dates back to Hippocrates and the Hippocratic Oath, which instructs us to teach the children of our teachers, that is, to become a mentor. Your new responsibility is a multi-generational trust. It is how our profession thrives and survives. It is your turn to take a young person under your wing, introduce them to medicine, or help a med student start a research project or find a career. You may not think that you're qualified. After all, you've just finished residency. True, but you're ready. You are ready to teach and inspire because this was no ordinary spring semester. You just went through an historic event and have learned more than you know. 
COVID-19 was your capstone project. But the question remains, what exactly will you pass on because of your COVID experience? Let me suggest four lessons that I think will be meaningful to your future students and trainees. First, compassion matters. With social isolation, hospitalized patients were alone and without family. You became their family and held their hands on their way to recovery or the next world. And when you made those connections, you learned the power of the doctor-patient relationship to heal and to mend. That's a good lesson for a mentor to share. Second, science and discovery matters. COVID-19 will not be the last novel pathogen you will encounter during your careers. For those of you who will work in the clinic, model evidence-based practice. Don't be afraid to acknowledge that you don't know something. There is always more to learn. So stay attuned to the science and model lifelong learning. And for those of you who will be physician scientists, bring the next generation along. Share your delight in the discovery in all the things new and the special satisfaction that comes in the middle of the night when you have that epiphany and have figured something out. Third, public health matters. Don't forget the tried and true methods work. Following Dr. Fauci's guidance, we flattened the curve. Social distancing worked and is our best weapon against COVID-19 until we get a vaccine. And as importantly, public health surveillance is an important tool in identifying and mitigating emerging pathogens. We learned that we undervalued prevention to our collective peril. And that what is true for infectious disease is also true for the nation's epidemic of chronic disease. Finally, remember that healthcare does not happen in a vacuum. We know that COVID-19 has taken a disproportionate toll on people of color those who are economically disadvantaged, and those who lack access to primary care. The pandemic was the perfect storm of a virulent virus colliding with endemic disparities long entrenched in our society. So as you go forward, remind your mentees that social determinants matter. It's not just the science, but science in society that matters for human health and well-being. Perhaps that's the most important lesson I can share. There is much more for you to share, but if you still doubt that you're ready for mentorship, just remember what you've done in these final days of your training. You showed up, you cared, you held that hand, donned the PPE, administered convalescent serum, and advanced our knowledge. What you've learned in the crucible of COVID-19 is now ready to be passed on. These lessons will last a lifetime and span generations. And it all started here. Remember those first days at Houston Methodist when you passed a bronze sculpture entitled Compassion's Touch in which the outstretched hand of a patient is met by those of a healer? Remember those hands, those healing hands as you look down at your own and imagine the work of your hands going forward. Today, you continue in a great Houston Methodist tradition. Of course, I speak of Dr. Michael DeBakey, one of the greatest mentors in the history of medicine. His legacy is now your future. So hone your skills, learn every day, care for those who turn to you, and realize the debt you owe to those who brought you this far. You can't pay them back, but you can pay it forward. So be like Dr. DeBakey. His hands healed countless patients and continue to point you in the right direction. Be a mentor. Let that be the work of your hands as you continue a great Houston Methodist tradition. Congratulations on a job well done and my best wishes for the future. Good evening, and allow me to also congratulate each of you on the completion of your respective programs. My name is Trevor Burt, and I have the privilege to serve as the Vice President of Education in the Houston Methodist Academic Institute. It is always an honor to stand before the graduates to recognize the outstanding and exemplary faculty from your programs. 
The annual Faculty Teaching Awards presented by Graduate Medical Education provides an opportunity for us to recognize those who put great effort and intention into making your training experience exceptional. While this year is undoubtedly different, it should not take away from the recognition that each deserves. Each resident and fellow was given the opportunity on the GME administered annual survey to nominate one or more faculty teachers and to comment on their abilities and commitment to teaching. On behalf of GME and the Houston Methodist House Staff Council leadership, it is now my privilege to recognize the recipients of the 2019-2020 Faculty Teaching Award recipients. The first faculty awards being presented this evening are to physician educators who have demonstrated outstanding service and commitment to teaching residents and fellows. Each will receive a certificate and an Apple lapel pen. This year's recipients are Dr. Mukhtar al Saidi, Pulmonary Disease and Critical Care Medicine and Internal Medicine, Dr. Anjali Benitez, Family Medicine, Dr. Donald Collins Jr., Plastic Surgery, Dr. Adia Dalla, Pulmonary Disease and Critical Care Medicine, Dr. Kelly Gabler, Family Medicine, Dr. Isaac Goldberg, Family Medicine, Dr. Deepa Gatur, Pulmonary Disease and Critical Care Medicine, Dr. Ijaz Janjua, Neurology, Dr. Nima Magami, General Surgery, Dr. Felipe Flores, Urology, Dr. John Nance, Pulmonary Disease and Critical Care Medicine, Dr. Erica Green, Neurology, Dr. David Katz, Dr. Fernando Santa Cruz, Pulmonary Disease and Critical Care Medicine, Dr. Glenn Smith, Neurology, Dr. Daniel Lee, Dr. Faisal Zahiruddin, Pulmonary Disease and Critical Care Medicine. The second group of teaching awards is being given to physician educators who were nominated for exemplary service and commitment to teaching residents and fellows. Each will receive a certificate, an apple lapel pen, and an etched marble apple for their desks. The recipients are Dr. Bensi Abraham, Gastroenterology, Dr. Moez Almala, Cardiovascular Disease and Cardiovascular Imaging, Dr. Pierre Chevre, Plastic Surgery, Dr. Terry Clyburn, Adult Reconstructive Orthopedic Surgery, Dr. George Edwards, Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dr. Jeff Friedman, Plastic Surgery, Dr. Rajan Gadia, Vascular Neurology, Dr. Leonard Goldberg, Micrographic Surgery and Dermatologic Oncology, Dr. Ricardo Gonzalez, Urology, Dr. Blythe Gorman, Cytopathology, Dr. Ashrith Guha, Cardiovascular Disease, Dr. Christopher Hobday, Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dr. Imad Hussein, Transplant Cardiology, Dr. Rose Kavari, Reconstructive Surgery and Neurology and Female Pelvic Medicine and Reconstructive Surgery, Dr. Neil Kleiman, Interventional Cardiology, Dr. John Labus, Radiology Diagnostic, Dr. Andy Lee, Neuro-Ophthalmology, Dr. Sherry Lieberman, Orthopedic Surgery, Dr. David Lintner, Orthopedic Surgery Sports Medicine, Dr. Rex Marco, Orthopedic Surgery, Dr. Sylvia Martinez, General Surgery, Dr. Joseph Mazdu, Neurology, Dr. Christoph Meyer, Spine Surgery, Dr. Brian Miles, Urology, Dr. George Nasser, Cardiology, Dr. Ekene Enoy Okoye, Surgical Pathology, Dr. Eric Peden, Vascular Surgery Integrated, Dr. Michael Pirix, Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dr. Iman Quigley, Gastroenterology, Dr. Miguel Quinones, Cardiovascular Imaging, Dr. Scott Rand, Family Medicine, Sports Medicine, Willowbrook, Dr. J. Rowe, Anatomic and Clinical Pathology, Dr. Paul Sherman, Clinical Cardiac Electrophysiology, Dr. Mary Schwartz, Selective Pathology, Surgical Pathology, 
Dr. Dipin Shah, cardiovascular imaging. Dr. Ruby Shah, internal medicine. Dr. Jawaira Shaquille, endocrinology, diabetes, and metabolism. Dr. Jaron C., medical physics. Dr. Jessica Thompson, molecular genetic pathology. Dr. Michael Trachtenbreut, diagnostic radiology. Dr. Todd Trask, neurological surgery. Dr. Amit Verma, neurology. Dr. Arthur Zeski, selective pathology, hematologic pathology. Congratulations to each of you, and thank you for your ongoing commitment to creating an outstanding learning environment for our trainees. In 2017, the Houston Methodist GME Committee awarded the inaugural Sherilyn A. Gordon Memorial Award for distinguished leadership and professionalism in medical education. The intent of this annual award is to be a perpetual reminder of Dr. Gordon's leadership to those who had the privilege of knowing her, working alongside her, learning from her, or having been cared for by her. Annually awarded, we recognize an outstanding Houston Methodist resident or fellow, a program director or faculty, and a residency program coordinator who consistently demonstrates commitment to medical education, research, mentorship, and professionalism. All traits embodied by Dr. Gordon through her devotion to medical education at Houston Methodist. Each recipient of the Gordon Award will receive a commemorative plaque, their name listed on the perpetual plaque that remains in the GME office, as well as support to attend a leadership or professional meeting advancing their career, as Dr. Gordon would have encouraged. It is now my honor to present the third annual Sherilyn A. Gordon Memorial Award for, Award for Distinguished Leadership and Professionalism in Medical Education to resident Dr. Taiwo Adesoye from General Surgery, Program Coordinator Shori Senegal from Diagnostic Radiology, and Program Director Faculty Dr. Sherry Lieberman from Orthopedic Surgery. Congratulations and thank you for your commitment to leadership and professionalism in medical education. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. David Kuznarek, Director of GME, who will announce the trainees completing their programs this evening. Good evening. My name is David Kuznarek and I'm the Director of Graduate Medical Education at Houston Methodist. I have the distinct honor of announcing the names of our graduating residents and fellows. I will announce the program name, followed by the program director's name, and will then announce the name of each graduate. Adult Reconstructive Surgery, Program Director, Dr. Stephen Encavo, Julian Chaplow, James O'Dowd, Advanced Heart Failure and Transplant Cardiology, Program Director, Dr. Barry Trachtenberg. Caroline Marsbani, Harsh Patel, Benjamin Salgado. Advanced Interventional Cardiology, Structural Intervention. Program Director, Dr. Neil Kleiman. Aperva Patel. Anatomic Pathology. Program Director, Dr. Suzanne Powell. Pollyann McClayton. Anatomic and Clinical Pathology, Program Director, Dr. Suzanne Powell. Charlotte Kim. Paloma Monroy Bosk. Kent Swimley. Jessica Tomsula. Breast Gynecologic Pathology. Program Director, Dr. Michael Devers. Shima Musavi. Breast Imaging. Program Director, Dr. Luz Venta. John Hyen. Cardiovascular Diseases. Program Director, Dr. Stephen Little. Fahimala Beg. Jeekin Bot. Miguel Castro. Mihail Nareskin, Anusha Sankara, Cardiovascular Imaging, Program Director Dr. Dipan Shah, Mon Malafshi, Basil Al Sebek, Shaden Caliph, 
Rusha Parikh, Alpana Senapati, Prampapa Vijpangsa. Clinical Cardiac Electrophysiology. Program Director, Dr. Miguel Valderabano. This program is celebrating its first graduate. Adi Lador. Clinical Informatics. Program Director, Dr. Scott Long. This program is also celebrating its first graduates. Paul Christensen, Gazelle Eskandari. Clinical Neurophysiology. Program Director, Dr. Amit Verma. Neil Patel. Continence, Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery and Neurourology. Program Director, Dr. Julie Stewart. Rachel Sosland. Cytopathology. Program Director, Dr. Michael Thrall. Tiffany Shu, Leah Sue. Endocrinology. Program Director, Dr. Layla Tabatabai. Spandana Brown, Carla Bermudez St. Andre. Family Medicine, Program Director Dr. Kelly Gabler. Danny Joseph, Sadar Khan, Omar Mafuz, Berlandrika Jatoria McNeil, Chuck Wemeka Christian Naboyfe. Irene Sung. Irma Tamayo. Narne Topoljikian. Family Medicine Sports Medicine at Willowbrook. Program Director, Dr. Scott Rand. Kevin Liu. Jonathan Zalamea. Female Pelvic Medicine and Reconstructive Surgery. Program Director, Dr. Danielle Antosh. This program is celebrating its first graduate, Shweta Desai. Gastroenterology. Program Director, Dr. Bensi Abraham. Carrie Glassner. Daniel Zhang. General Surgery. Program Director, Dr. Sylvia Martinez. Preliminary Graduates. Lutfi Barguthi, Joao Bernardi Bombadelli. Categorical graduates, Taiwo Adesoyi, Alexi Bloom, Vishnawath Shagaretti, Hazmin Cole. Catherine Davis, Uges Wokedi. Genitor Urinary Medical Kidney Pathology. Program Director, Dr. Stephen Shen. This program is celebrating its first graduate, Ziad El Zatari. Hematologic Pathology. Program Director, Dr. April Uten. Fadi Alakil, Jacob Armstrong. Hematology and Medical Oncology. Program Director, Dr. Jun Zhang. Usman Khan, Emery Koja. Hematopathology, Program Director, Dr. April Uten. Andrea Barberi, Shu Wan Liu. Internal Medicine, Program Director, Dr. Molina Awar. Gonzalo Acosta Garcia, Ethan Burns, Kalyan Chaturi, Deepika, Daniel Galeas Rodriguez, Alejandro Granillo Ibanez, Michelle Jones Polly, Brian Carahelios, Saro Kasparian, Minjong Kwan, Cindy Huen, Amal Patel, Li Mei Provencher, Ryan Reynolds, 
Lily Romero Karam, Omar Tamimi, Lillian Vargas Barahona. Interventional Cardiology, Program Director, Dr. Neil Kleiman. Ahmed Aga, Omar Jarudi. Medical Physics, Program Director, Dr. Romero Pino. Allison Marsh. Micrographic Surgery and Dermatologic Oncology, Program Director, Dr. Leonard Goldberg. Nan Huen, Sonal Parikh. Molecular Genetic Pathology, Program Director, Dr. Jessica Thomas. Joseph Annunziata. Nephrology, Program Director, Dr. Horacio Adrage. Vinay Acharya, Andrew Evans. Neurological Surgery, Program Director, Dr. David Baskin. Zane Bogani, Varendra Desai, William Steele III. Neurology, Program Director, Dr. Erica Green. Hina Aslam, Jillian Heisler, Rajil Imran, Juan Toledo Atucha. Neuromuscular Medicine, Program Director, Dr. Shital Shroff, Ashley Anderson, Nalufar Yari. Neuro-Ophthalmology, Program Director, Dr. Andrew Lee. Nita Bhatt, Shruthi Harish Bindiganvale. Neuropathology, Program Director, Dr. Suzanne Powell. Sahara Cathcart, Darshan Trivedi. Obstetrics Gynecology, Program Director, Dr. Conrad Harms. Diana Herrera. Justine Johnson. Lisa Kimball. Lauren Langshan. Aaron Roberts. Violetta Vasquez. Orthopedic Sports Medicine. Program Director, Dr. David Littner. Oliver Harvey. Hamed Vahedi Kashgari. Orthopedic Surgery. Program Director, Dr. Bradley Weiner. Andrew Kay. Catherine Miller. Angelina Vera. Plastic Surgery, Program Director, Dr. Pierre Chevre. Christian Arroyo Alonso. Ariel Orion. Pulmonary Disease and Critical Care Medicine. Program Director, Dr. Mukhtar Alsadi. Nishal Brambat. Jared Lee. Surgical Pathology. Program Director, Dr. Mary Schwartz. Jeffrey Conyers. Daniel Duyon. Vasantha Lakshmi Gali. Henning Gertz. Daphne Massey. Spine Surgery. Program Director, Dr. Bernard Meyer. Vincat Kaveri. Ayman Rashid. Surgical Critical Care, Program Director, Dr. Kevin Pei. This program is celebrating its first graduate. Oluwa Bukola Olatabosun. Vascular Neurology, Program Director, Dr. Rajan Gadia. Tanu Garg. Vascular Surgery, Integrated Residency. Program Director, Dr. Eric Peden. 
Luis Gomez, Ahmed Mohammed, Vascular Surgery Fellowship, Program Director, Dr. Eric Peden, Edward Andreos, Congratulations to the 2020 graduates of the Houston Methodist Residency and Fellowship Programs. We wish you all success, both personally and professionally. Know that you will always be a cherished part of the Houston Methodist family. As we close this evening, we remind those of you continuing your education and the fellowship, you will now refine the skills and techniques that you acquired at Houston Methodist and narrow your focus to your life's professional purpose. For those whom this event signals your progression into your professional career, although the learning curve may continue to be steep, take the guidance, mentorship, and learning opportunities that you have obtained here with you on your journey. For all of us, it has been an honor watching you become competent physicians. Carry with you the eye care values that make Houston Methodist unique. Integrity, compassion, accountability, respect, and excellence. Whether you enter private practice, academia, or continue in fellowship training, these values will frame your encounters with patients and others. As we end this ceremony, I'd like to take a moment to thank all those who helped to make this graduation possible and who supported our graduates along their journey. Our dedicated faculty, our supportive program directors and coordinators, the ancillary and support staff throughout the hospital, hospital leadership, and last but not least, the staff of the GME office who listen attentively to residents and fellows and tend to the needs of the programs. And finally, we wish you and your loved ones safe passage through these difficult times. Please take care, stay safe, and stay healthy. Thank you and good night.